So we're in Logan County here today doing a little small game hunting, and I'm with the right crew for that, right? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're here for, for sure. <laughs> small game program coordinator here. And uh, John, everybody's farm looks just like this, doesn't it? Oh, right. Everybody yeah, when you drive across the state, they look just like this, don't they? That's right. No, really, this is perfect for a small game, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. This is a primo farm, and we've been working with Mike for a couple of years, and it's very rare that a landowner actually listens to some of the things we mentioned, <laughs> and you're going to see a lot of great habitat today thanks to the work of Mike and his family and friends that come out here and work with him to, to make it look like this. So Mike, tell me a little bit about your piece of property you got here. Obviously it looks like it was built for small game, but you told me you're mainly a deer and turkey guy. I am. Uh, I do enjoy seeing the quail, seeing the small game, but uh, when we started out with it, it was mostly deer and turkeys, but uh, found out that what you do bleeds over into the small game too. Hopefully it seems to be working, we'll see. We also have Zach Danks, and Zach, you're the turkey program coordinator as well as grouse. When you put out plots like this and you let the CRP grow up for small game, what's your turkey population gonna be like as well? You'd be doing the best you could do to help that local population and anything you could do. Quail management is, is turkey brood management, and if you want more turkeys, you gotta have more baby turkeys, and this cover for nesting and brood rearing is it's vital. Let's go meet dogs and load up, what do you think? Let's do it, right. let's do it. Let's go. Are you running beepers on these dogs if they go on point? Not beepers. So I've got a, like a GPS unit. It tells me when they stop, when they go on point. So there'll be times when they stop that I can't tell if they're stopped to use a bathroom or if they're actually pointing. I got you. But I'll have to be watching it and, and tell you. It's so thick, I was wondering to see how you knew when one was on point. Yep. So I didn't realize you had GPS on them. I run bells usually, but I've only got one bell now. So between the bells and the GPS, the beeper is handy. I have one on her, so we can use it if we need to. Okay. Oh, look at this nice ragweed strip. This is your food source mixed in with the cover. Hey, John, look for May up there. 52 yards from me. It's just saying she stopped right to your left. What do you got, May? What do you got, girl? What do you got? Raina, too. Uh -oh. One of them, May broke, it looks like. 33 to blue. He broke. This is wild bird hunting here. They'll run on the ground and take off on you some. This is really, really, really thick, but you can see that there is an area in the bottom where you can tell that the very bottom undergrowth is kind of missing. And this is perfect habitat for quail. They can get in here, areas to feed, but yet there's a cover, a canopy that keeps aerial predators from coming down and picking them all off. Everything wants to eat a quail. That birdie right here, looks like. At 41 yards, right up in the sumac. Oh, she's on dead point. Over there, Mike. Did she break? She broke. Man, this is pretty prime right through here. Yeah, it looks perfect. Got a point? Yep. Where are they at? They're in here. Nothing? You think these birds flew? Maybe we didn't see them or hear them, but might have been where they were. Who knows? So far, we're 0 for 3 on cubby encounters. The law of averages would you eventually get one to fly. Well, you would think. Habitat's ever-changing. A lot of people just don't recognize how nature's constantly evolving and changing, and we're constantly trying to maintain cover. So tell me a little bit about what you need for good quail habitat. When we talk about Bob White, we always talk about the bees. Bunch grasses, we got a bunch of bunch grasses behind mm -hmm. us, those mm -hmm. native warm season grasses. Bare ground, that's what Mike's making when he's burning. And part of what that burning does is diversify the plant community in different stages of plants. So he's resetting the plant community when he burns a patch, and that creates that opportunity to get that bug community in place. So if you get all those bees right, we'll have birds, and that's what we hope we find today. Oh, this looks good. Oh, they're in here. Zach and I will go on the upper side. You guys stay down over here. Let's make a miracle happen. There you go. How about that, Now guys? that's what we're talking about right there, Mike. <laughs> Hey, this bird is a juvenile. See those white tip feathers here? These are the secondary coverts. 
and when they're white tipped, that's a juvenile. When they're really, they're fuller and completely gray when it's an adult. So it means it was hatched this summer. We had two or three times where we thought we had birds. That last one held really tight. It was right in the corner. So as we make our way down here to this corner or that corner, I feel very comfortable that we're gonna flush another covey of quail here. The dogs are working good. Oop, deer, look at all of them. Tails going everywhere. That's the thing about this cover is the deer are secure here, 365. You know, I mean, they just come out to eat a little bit, come back bed in this, go in the woods. Dog still on point? Yep, she's 49 yards up ahead there. Oh, did you get one down? Yeah. Nice. All right. It's a little late getting up here on that. We had all three dogs on point, and as we come over the ridge here, the covey flushed. I think we got one down. Let's go see. Dead. Dead. Got it? Good girl. Well, that is a beautiful bird. I tell you what, you never get sick of seeing those dogs on point walk over and hear that flush. Yeah, it's a special right. moment in the hunting world. It really, really, truly is. Turkey, turkey, turkeys. Oh, if it was fall turkey season, Mike, we might have switched gears. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh, we got a point here. Double point, they're in there. There they go. I will never do that again. Mike, I couldn't even pick my bird. Everyone I picked was going down. I killed three. You, you got killed three? three. <laughs> I did. I knocked down three birds. I'll never do it in my life again. Mike. All right, Raina. Bring it here, Raina. There's one. There you go. Right dead there. Birds, She's got birds. one right here. Yeah, that one got hit really hard. Dead blue, dead. Here's one right here. Man. <laughs> that was awesome. Go, dude. Holy oh. cow. Well, I'll tell you what. I think that was a pretty good day. It's been a long time since I flushed cubbies of quail. And your all's dogs did great. Mike, it's obvious that all your habitat work is paying off. Well, I hope so. It makes me feel pretty good to have a day like this. <laughs>